In the world of Christian television, few names are as renowned as Daystar Television Network, a family-run empire that has touched millions since its founding in 1997 by the late Marcus Lamb. Yet, behind the inspirational programming and messages of faith lies a controversy so harrowing it has shaken the very foundation of this global ministry. At the heart of this crisis is a deeply personal and devastating allegation that has split the Lamb family and raised questions about leadership, integrity, and the prioritization of institutional image over justice. The scandal erupted when Marcus Lamb's son, Jonathan, and his wife, Susie, came forward with a stunning revelation. Their young daughter had allegedly been molested by a family member. The couple claims the ordeal was mishandled by Daystar's leadership, including Marcus and his wife, Joni Lamb, who now serves as the network's president following Marcus' tragic death from COVID-19 complications in 2021. In a series of escalating accusations and shocking disclosures, Jonathan and Susie allege that efforts to shield the network's reputation came at the expense of justice for their daughter. The situation is further complicated by a family feud over succession, with Jonathan asserting he was meant to inherit leadership of the network. A plan he claims was abruptly altered as a consequence of his accusations. What follows is a tale of betrayal, moral dilemmas, and a family grappling with unimaginable pain. The allegations against Daystar, the internal dynamics of the Lamb family, and the haunting accounts of abuse are layered with complexity and heartbreak. A Legacy in Turmoil When Marcus Lamb passed away in 2021, he left behind not just a media legacy, but a family bound by both faith and responsibility to continue his mission. Marcus' widow, Joni Lamb, took over as Daystar's president, while Jonathan Lamb, once serving as a vice president, found his role increasingly marginalized. By April 2023, Jonathan had been demoted after refusing to sign a non-disclosure agreement, NDA, setting the stage for his eventual termination over what Daystar described as deficiencies in judgment and performance. At the center of the turmoil, however, are the deeply personal allegations concerning their daughter. The child reportedly disclosed instances of molestation with the Lamb family allegedly failing to address the situation adequately. Jonathan and Susie's subsequent decision to bring their story to light has placed them at odds with the Daystar leadership, particularly Joni Lamb, whose response to the allegations has come under intense scrutiny. Over the past week, Daystar Television Network, the Christian TV empire founded in 1997 by the late Marcus Lamb, has made headlines over a shocking controversy involving the family-run organization. Lamb's son, Jonathan, and his wife, Susie, allege their young daughter was molested by a family member and that the horrific ordeal was improperly handled. Those stunning allegations come amid a dispute over leadership changes within Daystar. Marcus died in 2021 due to complications with COVID-19, leaving his wife, Joni, to serve as president of Daystar. Jonathan had served as a vice president but was demoted in April after purportedly declining to sign a non-disclosure agreement, NDA. Audio provided to investigative reporter Julie Royce features Jonathan and a representative from Daystar speaking about a document Jonathan had declined to sign and an ultimatum. This audio, which doesn't provide context on the document he's being asked to inscribe, is reportedly from last November. If you do not do that, then you are removing yourself from the board and removing yourself from your vice president position. And you are then still an employee, the representative warned. That's where we are. The drama surrounding Jonathan's relationship with Daystar is unclear, though the situation reportedly intensified after this exchange, as he was terminated by the network earlier this month over what the organization allegedly called deficiencies in his judgment and performance. The situation is complicated by the fact that Jonathan's sisters and brothers-in-law are also on staff at Daystar, possibly adding multiple intricacies to an already difficult scenario. Plus, Jonathan alleges he was always intended to be his father's successor, but that plans changed once he and Susie 
made the allegations reported by Roy's. Just days after a family dispute over these claims, Jonathan said his father sent an email to the family announcing a different succession plan and noting that his wife, Joni, would take over Daystar if he died. Jonathan told Roy's he believed that decision was a punishment for the abuse claims he made surrounding his daughter. Marcus passed away just three months after that email was sent, and Joni subsequently took over. Roy's report released after that video sheds light on the allegations and the heart of the complicated matter. In Roy's article, Jonathan and Susie are quoted saying their young daughter revealed a few years ago that she had been molested. At the time, the child didn't identify the man outside of a few characteristics. Over time, the couple began to suspect an unidentified family member who Roy's only referred to as Pete. Several factors added to these suspicions, including a story Pete allegedly told in which the child walked in on him when he was naked in the bathroom. After revealing the molestation, the little girl also allegedly became scared to go to Daystar, where Pete worked, according to Roy's. The child, at one point, even hid when he entered the room. Other family members also allegedly warned the couple about Pete, who they said would also go to Jonathan, and Susie's home to play when only the nanny was there. The unnamed nanny reportedly found this creepy, according to Roy's report. The situation came to a crescendo during the disturbing event that reportedly unfolded August 3, 2021, at a beach house Daystar rented for its annual executive retreat. This happened about eight months after the initial claims of molestation came to light. According to the couple, Pete followed their five-year-old daughter upstairs while she was changing to go swimming. Susie said the man's eyes went black, as though he was in what she described as zombie mode. Jonathan said he quickly took action and ran to the room. To my horror, when I got up there, my daughter was completely naked and he was in the room, Jonathan told Roy's. And I was just immediately like, what are you doing? Screaming at the top of my lungs. And he is like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry. He apologized like 50 times, like I caught somebody red-handed. Following Jonathan's dismissal from Daystar, he and Susie told Royce that Joni and Marcus, the latter of which is no longer alive to respond to these accusations attempted to protect Pete and the network's image rather than the child who has been purportedly harmed. The Elder Lamb's alleged response. Jonathan and Susie claimed Joni, upon learning of the abuse, asked to meet with her granddaughter one-on-one, -on -one, and that the girl later stopped talking about the abuse. They said it was unclear how the conversation went, but that their daughter was suddenly silent about it. Meanwhile, the couple secretly went to the police and reported what had happened, keeping this information from the family. According to Roy's, authorities initially closed the case due to the child not discussing details, though it was reportedly later reopened and is currently pending with the Colleyville Police Department in Texas. Months later, when Pete was allegedly found by Jonathan alone with his daughter at the house rental, Jonathan and Susie hoped Marcus and Joni would get involved. But according to Jonathan and Susie, the elder lambs felt Pete was innocent. A discussion about the incident is said to have descended into shouting and accusations aimed at the child. Additional details are in Roy's report, but one final claim worth noting. Jonathan and Susie allege Joni said God told her while praying that Pete was innocent, with Marcus purportedly joyfully clapping over the revelation. The family allegedly ended up visiting with a counselor at the behest of Marcus and Joni to assess the molestation claims, though Jonathan and Susie said Marcus eventually concluded Pete was innocent. Jonathan and one of his brothers-in-law were purportedly brought into Marcus' office and told the allegations were found to be untrue. According to Roy's, Marcus threatened that they'd need to find another job if they continued believing Pete was guilty of the abuse. Roy's reported that Jonathan felt he had no choice but to listen. Daystar and Joni Lamb respond. Daystar reportedly issued a statement to Roy's noting the matter had been settled and that an internal investigation unfolded when the issue was first raised at the 2021 retreat. It concluded with no wrongdoing found 
nor evidence provided that corroborated the allegation, according to the statement. It is unfortunate that these private family matters have just now resurfaced as these allegations were proven false, and the matter was resolved more than three years ago, after which family functions including holiday gatherings continued for several more years, the statement read.